back to the M30 ITB E28 series. In the last episode, we got this thing running. In today's episode, we're going to dial it in, check out the new exhaust, and replace a few things that should have been replaced. So, first off, if you guys haven't been able to tell already, we're on our brand new camera. I haven't gotten the mic set up done yet, so bear with me. Later in this video, we may have the mic, may not, who knows. But the new camera is in action, so I'm excited about that. I hope it looks good. I'm still working out the settings. But back to the E28. So we have a few things here, obviously, as you can see. Uh, I ran into a few snags. I got an exhaust made, and that's all very exciting. So to start, we do have a full exhaust on this car. We will hear it in a little bit. What I went with was the Ireland Engineering rear half, which is basically a muffler or resonator, and it goes to about the axle. And um, then I have the Schmiedman headers, and basically what I needed was a pipe to match in the middle. I didn't go cats on this thing. Uh, I was gonna have Zach make me a big old fancy exhaust, but the, the costs, I just couldn't get myself to do it. The Ireland exhaust is about $480. With shipping, it was about 560 or so. Uh, and then I just went to a regular old uh, exhaust shop and had them make the headers to the exhaust. I have to just say the Ireland exhaust very, very disappointed with the uh, the fitment. I mean, it it hit the well. First off, the tip sat angled. It hit the axle, hit the drive shaft, and it angled the center pipe uh, just down to the floor. I mean, this thing was sitting on the ground. So the muffler shop basically had to rework that, and then they also had to rework the headers and add flanges because the headers were letting out way too close to the firewall, way too close to the trans. If you guys remember me grinding down the block right there where it the transmits it. So now what we have to do, now that we have an exhaust, we have to get our wideband installed. So with the standalone ECU and tuning and stuff, you can't use a stock O2 sensor. You need a wideband, which basically will read you know all the AFRs rather than just like basically a target of 14.7. So I'm using the Spartan, uh, what is it? Spartan, Lam Spartan 2 Lambda controller from 14.7. My tuner recommended this to me. He said this works well with Mega Squirt. So basically, what you get here is you get obviously your wideband sensor, then you get your controller and a loom of wiring. And I will show you guys how to wire this in a second. But to make it easier, we have a factory O2 sensor from an OBD1 car or a M30 B35 car. Basically, we're going to cut this, splice in the wideband, and then wire the wideband to the other things we need it wired to. We'll get to that in a bit. Furthermore, I have a brand new radiator here. The one thing I didn't replace was the radiator. We are using the original radiator from my parts car, which is like a 1983. Anyway, we got to work ahead of us, then we're going to balance the ITBs and start the tuning process with my tuner. Uh, it's going to be mostly remote stuff, but we will kind of work with that as we go. So very exciting stuff. Let's get into it. Okay, so we have a plug for an O2 in here for now. I told them to install it until I get my wideband. You gotta take this out, and luckily they put the bung in the proper placement to where it doesn't hit the exhaust or anything. Oh, while we're under here, I almost forgot. I'll also include a clip. I had the linkage in the wrong way, so when I went for my first spin around the block, just to like test things, I uh, had a horrible thumping from the transmission. I'll put a video in and I'll explain what I did wrong there, so if you're doing this in the future. First and second were the only ones that gave me issues, and then third, fourth, fifth, all good. I was like, all right, something's hitting. Well, surely enough, I had the linkage on the wrong way. So the diagram shows you to install it like this with it sweeping up like that, right? And then the shifter bushing is offset, and you could offset it either long way that way or long way that way. Well, I have it long way that way, and when you do that, and you have it like this, it puts this over under like this into the uh, guibo. So my guibo is hitting my linkage. You can see it rubbing right there. Um, now, my first thought was to put the shifter bushing long way that way, which would then bring this like that. But I just asked a buddy, and he said that his is installed like this, where it sweeps upwards, which to me makes even more sense, because even when it's pushed like this, it still sits kind of close. So I am I think I'm just going to follow suit of what he does and just rock it like this. That was a scary moment for me, but I think we're all right. Okay. 
So the controller comes out about here. And I need to get these two things connected. This will run right about here. Connect like this. Okay, so now how can I route this in a clean, safe way? Not many options down here, which sucks. So, we got our wideband controller, hose clamped in, it ain't the prettiest, but it works. Now the wiring's routed all the way up, and there's plenty of room up top for us to wire it in. Comes with instructions, so you have a bunch of different wires in here. The important ones we need, the red wire, which is the power, that has to be on a switch 12 volt. What's nice about the E28 is you have this auxiliary fuse box right here, which literally has a constant 12 and an ignition 12 volt. So I'm going to tie the 12 volt into this. And then you need the black and the white wire, which is the electronics ground and the heater ground. Um, the electronics ground has to be grounded where the ECU is grounded, which would be right here. What sucks about this is I have to now run a power wire here and a ground wire here, complete opposite ends of the engine bay. So I'm going to have to split this loom a little bit. And then obviously the other most important one is the green, which is the linear output. That's what goes into the ECU. The Mega Squirt, being a plug and play, has a linear input, um, which is the stock O2 input. So the stock O2 harness, which is down there, which plugs into this, has heater ground, electronics ground, power, and then the linear, or not linear, but the output to the ECU. So instead of cutting into the factory O2 harness, we have a little diagram here I'll show you guys. You can see here, you got green, which is signal, top right, if you're kind of looking at the connector like this. So this top right wire, whatever color that is, I'm going to splice into that, get the green linear output from the wideband into that. Then you can plug that right into the factory harness and we'll be good there. And then otherwise you have the brown which is the simulated narrow put out band with for only need it for a stock ECU just so the check engine light doesn't get tripped. Don't need that. And then the blue or the orange which is basically like connects to an LED to tell you if your O2 sensor is the right distance away. I'm not even going to bother with that because it ain't getting rewelded, so it's in the right place or it's not. I don't care. I got the O2 pigtail here tied in so I got the signal to the signal for the wideband. The rest of these wires you don't use. So then this can plug right into the factory harness right here. So that takes care of that. And then the rest, I will have to pull out of this loom and route their respective ways. And I'll show you that once that's done. Okay, for getting the 12 volt hooked up, we're gonna go to our aux power block right here, which is very nice that these E28s have this. So one of these is constant and one is ignition we need the ignition one okay this red one red wire as you could guess is our constant 12 so we don't want that one just to make sure that this one is working right I'm gonna flip on the ignition and see okay so now this one should have 12 yep alright one on the right is our ignition 12 volt and for the wires you also have to wire in the fuse that the the wideband comes with so you just kinda splice it into the red wire and then the other end goes into the uh, the fuse right here. There is our 12 volts. We gotta pop a fuse in there. Okay, cover that up. I got the grounds both added to my ground point here. It's crucial that the grounds for the wideband are matching the grounds for the ECU like at the same point. I don't know why but they say to do it so I got them all right here. I gotta still clean up the way this is all routed. Power obviously comes out of there. I got the linear output into the stock O2 sensor. Remounted my FPR. But now we're ready for getting this thing, whatchamacallit, uh, kind of adapted here is the word I'm looking for. Come onto the Mega Squirt. You go into your air fuel ratio and you could select which sensor you got and 14.7 actually shows up so you hit that and then it basically already has presets here write it to the controller write complete now we can close out 
and now our AFRs should be working. I cannot start the car yet because I have no gas and the car is up in the air. So I'm going to change out the radiator real quick, get some gas in here, and then we can make sure our uh, wideband works. And then we could uh, send my some start data logging and send it to the tuner. Oh, well, what do you know? This is a bear radiator made in South Africa. Funny enough, this is from 04 by the way, it's not original, I thought it was old enough, but I saw a thread about people saying that these bear in South Africa radiators are not good, they don't cool very well. I think this one's clogged, but also at the same time, uh, yeah, weird, they don't, they don't, they say they're not good, so I bought a Nissan's instead, the E12 outside has a E28 bear, and I thought about it, but then I said, you know what, I don't want, uh, I want this thing to be cooled as best as it can be, so here we are. Okay, if you look in the thermostat housing and at the thermostat here, something in this system had rust and some nasty stuff in it. I would guess the radiator. I mean, there's literally chunks right here, so. I think something was clogged up. I did have the thermostat in there the right way, had the arrow on it pointed up and all that. What I'm going to do now, first off, clean all this out, then I'm going to bench bleed, not bench bleed, what am I talking about? I'm going to test the thermostat in a stove pot, make sure that it opens up when it hits the right temperature, and then uh, we're going to put all this back together. Yeah, if you look inside this hose. I think that radiator was partially clogged, if not all the way, a lot of crud in there. Okay, I buttoned up the cooling system, we got it running outside. So far so good, the expansion tank is at a high level which is good because before it would drop when running. So hopefully if I turn it off once it's done you know, bleeding, once I get up to temp and the heater core opens, hopefully that doesn't raise and overflow. And we do have working AFRs. That is a good sign right there. So we're at 10.2 right now. It means we're running extremely rich, like very, very rich. So I'm gonna start logging once I'm sure the cooling system's good. And then we can uh, send over these logs to my tuner. Shout out to Jack and uh, He'll get these dialed in, and then this should be uh, should be good, man. We should be ripping this thing. I'm just hoping that the new cooling system holds up. Hoping nothing leaks. I'm happy that my wideband install went well, though. That's a great sign. And here, you guys are listening to this car for the first time. I forgot. Sounds nice, yeah. I'll try to give it some revs. It'll probably hardly rev because. Uh, the, the AFRs are way wacky, but let's get you guys some, some rev noise. Okay, now that we got this thing running, cool, all that stuff, got some fuel in it, we gotta sync the ITBs. And to do that, you need one of these thingies, which is like a carburetor airflow meter, because they have to be perfect. And what you do is, you come in here and you shove it in the ITV and it'll give you an error reading, right? So I'm gonna try to let you guys see this and we're gonna sync them. All right, so throttle body one. Right at six. So you can kind of see maybe the bar. Right at six. Throttle body set number two. Oh, we're flowing no air. I don't know if you can see it, but it's all the way at the top. It's about 1.25, so no air in these front two. Back one, at about six. So these are actually about in line. These two in the middle are completely off. So that's probably why this thing kind of sounds weird. It sounds like it's down on a cylinder. It's getting no air. So we're gonna have to correct that right now. I believe for this first, or for this set, it's gonna be this J spring right here. There's little, you know, the lockers on the back. I kind of showed you when I installed them. We just gotta play with those.
Sounds sick. So I'm gonna go ahead and say they're synced. I don't think I could do any better than that. Cooling system's working good. Everything is in the final stages here. So I'm gonna call it a night tonight and tomorrow we'll get some, uh, some tuning and some data logging done. This fire's right up, sounds good. I got my idle set so it's not so high anymore. My AFRs, 10 to 1, I mean we're running extremely rich. Map, everything seems to be working here. 80% fuel load, which at idle seems kind of odd. I think like that's a little high. My battery voltage is not good. This battery, I think, is shot. Right, I'm going to load up the new tune. Would you like to send and burn configuration to controller? Yes. Okay, so I think I have to reset my TPS again. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, okay, so AFRs are immediately better. We're at the 12, 13, 50% fuel load. Before it was at 80%, so that's good. Map still chilling around 60. Okay, so yeah, we're in a 13 AFR. Obviously, since we're doing this remotely, it's gonna be like little adjustments. He's not just gonna go all the way and uh, just change it like crazy, but there is an improvement. So now, still a little hiccupy, but we're off. First real drive. Oh, car. It's a little less rich at full throttle. 
still have no idea what my uh, what my rev limiter is set to, but. Is actually not bad. That was about 12, which still for an NA car is a little bit rich, but it's not horrible. It's really it's it's like casual driving that's still just super super rich. Tech at it. Data logging to number two uh, or three, I guess. So we were discussing how this car is having big time issues with its like medium cruising uh, light load and that comes down to just the fact that it's ITBs and they're basically there's a really fine line between full throttle and idle you know because everything has its own runner so he was trying to tune matte based like I said RHD tells you they want it to be uh, alpha N so I think he found an option in mega squirt to like do a ITB based tune and now we have it set to that, and I think we're switching over to Alpha N. So this is our first attempt. So like right there, I just floored it, and it's like nothing. Yeah, we're having. Yeah, car's acting very odd. So this will have to be cleaned up. Yeah, we don't really have any full throttle. Yeah, it's leaning out big time. Okay, so yeah, that's this. This tune's a dud. This one needs to be. Definitely. I mean, so mid-range is good, but watt is bad, 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 bad. So, oh, that's a good sign. It doesn't break up anymore, so that's good. So I asked him what we're doing tuning-wise now, and uh, we, we've reverted over to Alpha N. I may have mentioned. Okay, we are having an issue though, where it's not getting fuel. The acceleration enrichment is not on, but I think he said that he has that turned all the way down now help tune like up but we're definitely still rich but at least we're not uh, we're not stumbling anymore and that's where the alpha N comes in and helps because it's TPS based uh, instead of like map which is like load and, and air pressure since it's a uh, ITBs we don't really have a manifold we don't really have any manifold pressure so map is not really a great way of tuning these alpha N's much easier that's why I have an IAT sensor but yeah, we're definitely having some enrichment problems when starting off, but drivability-wise, oh, it's beautiful. Goes through the revs nicely. Let's see how it is when you actually open it up. Dude, it's beautiful. It's definitely a little rich. It's still like 10.8, which is more fuel than we need for NA, but forward here alpha n was definitely the way to go even though it's not the best engine management for something like this you kind of have to but dude it's it's really drivable so that was like fourth gear everything feels really nice so like before you would go to do this and it would just bah, 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 hiccup 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 and it would fall on its face because it was just like max rich no sort of like understanding of load and air pressure with the map we got our fuel enrichment fixed as you guys saw we started off with no hiccuping or falling out of its face so that's good step in the right direction he said the load axis got mixed up and kind of like reset itself on that tuning things i don't understand but uh right now we're still doing drivability stuff so the next couple will probably be a little bit boring he just wants to make sure that it's drivable like for daily driving conditions and i'd say so far it actually is and then he said after these next couple then we'll start getting to making power which is exciting because i was kind of thinking to myself like man like it's running good it's definitely still rich but it's kind of not not very fun and i know obviously the richer the slower but um i was kind of thinking to myself like oh i hope i hope more comes from this and he said more will come so right now casual driving and then uh full full pulls. It's, it's literally like an M30 
you've never heard before. Another successful run, keep on repeating. I'll probably, the next couple, I may not film, because I think they're gonna be really quick, boring iterations. Like, that felt really solid. Uh, so I will come back once we're like starting to make a little bit more power. Okay, so I'm trying my mic setup for the first time with my lavalier. Hopefully this sounds good. What better time to test out a mic setup than after we got the trumpets all the way installed. I finally went ahead and got the trumpets put on. Let me just tell you, that was very frustrating with the bolts coming from that way. It took me way longer than it should have. The last trumpet had to be trimmed because of the booster. I didn't want to, you know, do a new booster. I didn't want to relocate the booster. So I just went ahead and trimmed it. Hardly noticeable. And one slightly shorter trumpet will have such a hardly any noticeable effect on uh, performance, torque, whatever. So I think we're good to go. I, sp I spoke with RHD themselves. I'm about to go get my IAT actually welded. I did not run this thingy because the more I looked at it, the more I realized that this was actually for a plenum and the cutout was reverse and wrong and it was hitting my hose and I said to hell with it. But we are gonna hear these for the first time together with my new mic setup. I am really excited to hear what these sound like with the actual trumpets. I don't know why I didn't have these on sooner, but I figured for the rest of our tuning scenario, it's best to have these on because you want it to be, you know, the car in its final form, so. Let's see. <laughs> oh wow dude these sounds dude i thought this thing sounded crazy with just the spacers when you actually have the throttles on there wow this thing, I cannot wait to hear this at wide open. Holy <laughs> Man, I hope the mic pick, is picking this up nice because this sounds sweet. So it's nighttime, so we're not going to go for a drive right now. Uh, tomorrow, we'll take this thing for a spin, hear these trumpets at wide open, continue our tuning process. How exciting. Our final steps here at buttoning up the engine bay, aside from minor, minor stuff, IT sensor. So you guys saw before I just had it zip tied. That came with the kit that I said, well, which one do you use, this or this? Um, kind of interchangeable. So it had no use, So and it had a nice hole there. The hole had to be widened. Shout out to Zach for getting this thing all assembled for me. I had a bung to be welded, two different types of metals, so we just had to basically modify it all to fit. And now we got this really nice IT holder right here. So that, luckily this comes with two separate things. So I don't know if this is necessarily put in there for the purpose of holding an IAT or for what reason, but that's how we're gonna use it. So look at that. We got everything hooked up in here, man. We got our plenum, we got, not our plenum, trumpets. I'm excited to dry this thing tomorrow, so. I gotta still raise the expansion tank because I don't know if I explained it, but I kept talking about the issue with why is my expansion tank filling up. Well, stupid me, I looked over at my E12 parts car. Stock E28 M20 sits up there. Stock E28 M30 up here. I have the expansion tank lower than the radiator hose. So all the coolant's being pushed into this because it's gonna go to basically the lower point. So stupid me, I'll get a bracket made and figure it out there. But at least I solved the issue, so. Tomorrow morning, when it's nice and sunny out, we will go for a drive and uh, really hear this thing roar. All right, let's see what this thing is all about with the trumpets. Oh, I already hear it. I will, in the next episode, get you guys a mic in the engine bay to really hear them, but. Dude, the induction noise is crazy. It's like a owl. Oh my gosh, this thing sounds so sick. So this will be the last drive of the episode. Like I said, we're still in the tuning process. So we're like 75% of the way there. The last few pulls are where you really start to make power. So right now it's not making full power. It's still like really rich. But it's, it's getting there, man. It sounds...
sounds sick with the trumpets. I got the car all figured out, thank God. The cooling system, I remounted my expansion tank. So my expansion tank works now and is above the uh, upper radiator hose. So it actually everything functions how it should, which was really, you know, tweaking me out for a sec. So, I mean, we're, we're solid. When I get back, I'll show you guys how I mounted it. But things are going good. So in the next episode, we will hopefully have this thing 100% dialed in. And then we'll go for our first rip rip together and my initial impressions some actual sound clips and stuff like that so ouch that hurt hopefully i didn't just crack my oil pan so here is how i mounted the expansion tank so i got a bracket here going to the stock location bracket underneath going to the stock location which i'm actually really happy about so we have it mounted basically how it's intended to be mounted the location isn't quite uh, the same, obviously, I think on a 535 would be a little bit further back. Reservoir is in the way. The reservoir has two bolts here. What I did was I just moved it over so that only one is holding it. And then the other bolt location is holding the, the expansion tank. And now, as you can see, it is higher than the radiator hose, which, you know, as much as I know on these cars, I'm still always learning. And that is something I didn't even think about, that it has to be higher than the radiator hose. I think more modern BMWs, that's not really a thing because I'm pretty sure the M50 with the built-in expansion tank, I'm pretty sure it is the same level, right? So that must be just an old E28 thing, but figure that out. So now I could, I'm so done with the cooling system and I put all fresh cooling in here. So that's all done. But this thing is an absolute beauty with the stacks on there sounds sweet i can't wait for full power pulls and this car will probably be well not probably it will be a lot of fun so i'll conclude that tuning here uh like i said more boring uh back and forth and then we'll get into the fun stuff and i will meet you guys back here with our first official fully tuned drive thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed peace